Hey, what's going on, everybody? Uh, it's Matthew back with another episode of Waddy's channel, and today uh, we are returning to one of my favorite videos to make, and uh, that is the my favorite LJN tournament. Now, one of the things that you will learn about me uh, during this competition is I do become extremely impatient. <laughs> so, kind of like the first time I made these videos, you know, I might actually get through uh, this video or these videos. And I estimate it probably going to be like somewhere in the neighborhood of 30 to 50 videos. Now, is it really going to be in excess of 40 videos? I, I doubt it, but you know, it could be. Uh, I think we could probably stretch it out that far if we wanted to. So I might get this entire tournament finished in two weeks, but because my goal is to post a new video every three days and every now and then I will have additional videos kind of mixed in with the tournament. So I, I do think that you know, even if I do finish these uh, these videos in two weeks, you're not gonna see the entire completion of the tournament for like like two months. So now, I was thinking about it, and if my videos do extremely well, I'm talking about if I post it at you know nine o'clock in the morning, and by the time I wake up at you know nine o'clock the next morning or so, if I've got like over 200 views, that tells me that there's significant interest in these videos. That's the type of scenario where I feel like I will post a video either on a daily basis or at the very least, you know, every two days. But my goal is always to try to get my videos to 100 views before my next uh, posted video. So generally, I try to wait at least three days before uh, posting. So this is the uh, fifth video of this tournament. Uh, after the completion of the last one, I kind of realized that I did kind of mess up and it sucks that it's already early in the competition and I'm already kind of jacking some you know drinking some stuff around and uh, that didn't come out right <laughs> I'm not gonna edit that though cuz you know stupid me <laughs> uh, so uh, <laughs> one of the competitions was uh, me and Gene Okerlund versus Mr. Fuji I did have custom Mean Gene figures which means the customs should have won against the original and it's a very simple custom but I do have the Powers of Pain custom Mr. Fuji which technically you know he should have won against you know himself I, I think the way that the figures sit on the shelf it's possible those two figures would have squared off in the next round anyways so I don't know I, I guess I'm okay keeping you know the original Fuji going against the original Mr. Uh, uh, mean Gene. If I did ch uh, look at these, I probably would have chosen the white suit, uh, Mean Gene Okerlund, but you know, that's okay. You know, the original Mean Gene is a perfectly fine figure, so I'm okay keeping it the way it is. So today it looks like we do have eight matchups, and uh, one of them is uh, I'm gonna have some question marks uh, for one of these figures, and I'll explain when I do reach uh, that particular figure. So the first battle are you're gonna feature a mid-tier figure with the bottom tier figure. Uh, so we're gonna start off with Cowboy Bob Orton. This is easily one of the worst figures in the LJN line. I don't remember where I put him on my list. I think I had him in the top five, if I'm not mistaken. He does this backwards fist pump thing, which is I, I it makes no sense. And his only attribute is dropping an elbow. You can't really do any kind of fighting with this figure whatsoever. Display wise, aesthetically, with the vest and everything, I mean, that looks, that is absolutely amazing. I, I love that. You know, accessories always make the figures more appealing. So, for display purpose, yeah, you know, nice little cowboy figure, you know, nice. But if you're a kid trying to use this, Again, it's like the uh, Ron Simmons glue. It, it's so frustrating when a figure doesn't have the appropriate fighting pose to, to actually be used appropriately. And he, we talk about it all the time. Imagination, you know, you pretend to, to, to body slam someone even though their arms might be down at the waist or, or something. But it, it's just, you, you want it to be as realistic as possible. And this is just an absolutely terrible figure. And... I kind of got to uh, backtrack a little bit because you'll hear me say it constantly. When it comes to figures like the LJNs or when it comes to 
the Hasbro figures as an example. I, I absolutely love all the figures, okay? There, there really isn't a bad figure per se. Uh, I've mentioned several times there are certain figures that I don't like for particular reasons, but it doesn't necessarily mean I hate the figures. It just means I, I wish they could have been better. So, again, aesthetically fine figure, just uh, fight-wise, horrible. One of the worst LJNs and by a landslide, you know, I think it's like number five on my list or something. I can't remember, but uh, so Bob Orton goes up against, uh, I'd say a mid card figure in my opinion, and uh, it is Jake Roberts. Once again, the accessory, which the snake is probably the most rare and probably most popular accessory of this line, definitely most expensive. So this figure, which is not the best condition, I mean it's okay, but will normally sell for a hundred plus dollars on eBay because of the accessory. Otherwise, a figure in this condition, you'd probably get it for ten bucks, if that. And you could go to Ram Treasures, get one for like forty dollars, but uh, that to me, even that is, is severely overpriced for a, a simple rubber a rubber figure. The snake for Hasbro, perfection. The one for LJN. It is what it is. It's an accessory. You know, you're glad to have it. So Jake Roberts, when you as, when you first look at it as an actual wrestling figure, with arms up like that, it, it's okay for a fighting pose. Like you you might think it is you know a, a top notch figure, like top twenty, top twenty five type figure. Then you, you, you start working with it and you realize that it really isn't as fun of a figure to use as you might expect. And, you know, like I said, it, it, it's adequate. Uh, he is excessively small, kind of like the British Bulldog small. Maybe a little bit taller, but, you know, in comparison to a lot of the other figures, smaller figure. But Jake Roberts, you know, he's one of those characters I grew up watching and one's like one I could actually remember. He had this really interesting uh, blinding blind match against uh, Rick Martel, and it was one of the more odd matches you'll ever see. You know, they got a little mask over their head, and they're basically having to reach around the ring trying to find the other person. Yeah, I can't remember how the match ended. I, I assume he DDT Martel and pinned him, but just a very odd one. Uh, I think Rick Martel used his arrogant spray bottle to blind him at one point. Yeah, I assume that's you know how it how it played out. But anyways, uh, just to the competition itself, there really isn't. A second, I brought up Jake Roberts. I think everyone knew right off the bat this was going to be the winner. This figure, I, I can't think of anyone other than maybe Jimmy Snuka or that he might have actually defeated. Just a terrible figure. Um, Jake Roberts does move on to the next round. So I do have the Elizabeth figure coming up next. And the one thing I don't like about the female wrestling figures, and you see it in Mattel or, or, or Jax or pretty much any of these lines, they turn the female wrestlers into like Barbie dolls. And that is so frustrating. You can create an Elizabeth figure with, you know, basically this 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 build, you know, and you could still make it really slim and you know fitting for the actual person. But you you don't have to make it like an actual Barbie. It, it could be this size. But they don't do that with the figures. And when I started buying a lot of the the Mattels, Jacks, uh, female wrestlers, you see all of them with these really tiny hands and just really skinny arms it was just so unrealistic and yeah i know they're so much smaller and thinner than you know the male wrestlers got it but still that's it just takes it detracts from the overall figure otherwise i think this could have been a great one so the way that the leg kind of bends on this it's kind of frustrating because i get one of those uh, david garland stands off of etsy 
uh, four left 3D creations. And so when you put them in the stands with Macho Man, it's a two-piece two stand, you can only fit really one leg under there in order to have the rest uh, have hers to kind of stand up and you know she's got to basically lean up against macho man anyways because it she doesn't really stand too well as it is so there are a couple of uh, a few customs here this first one not really going to be a part of this not really technically it's going to be a, a sensational sherry you know they i bought this i think with one of the macho king figures paint job on it mediocre uh I probably could have done as well of a job on this myself. The paint is really sticky. Black paint is starting to come off. You can see the purple. And uh, yeah, like, like I said, it was a very mediocre, mediocre job, but I mean, still, I'd rather have this than not have it, so I really can't complain. Sensational Sherry, original, uh, would defeat that one. Now, one of my all-time favorite figures is the custom from uh, Robert Jackson. He did an absolutely amazing job. I, I love everything from the skirt to the design of, you know, the Macho King, uh, Macho Man type of uh, decal on there. And, um, yeah, it says Macho Man, not Macho King. Uh, I love the colors, you know, the dark blue on the boots or on, on the shoes and on the top. It's just fantastic. And I think this uh, custom uh, uh, skirt... An amazing job this would be an easy, uh, easy and obvious answer uh, for moving on to the next round but from Stanger GQ I picked one of his collections and the mega powers Elizabeth is absolutely phenomenal everything from the colors of the mega powers to the awesome little rose that's kind of built into the dress this is such a perfect figure and meshes so well with the mega power uh, Randy Savage and Hulk Hogan figures and I, I just gotta get one well no I do have one over here one of those little three stands but again uh, the, the stands they look nice but they don't always work for every figure so a lot of figures I basically have them leaning against other folks anyways so for this uh, for this competition or for this round the Mega Powers Elizabeth is the one that moves forward to the next round And uh, it, it's kind of funny, just kind of remembering how Macho Man always acts around her. And, like, to me, Macho Man was always, like, the premier wrestler in the, in the World Wrestling Federation. You know, Hogan, Warrior, Macho Man. To me, those were always, like, the big three. But going back and, like, re-watching a lot of these old videos, it's kind of frustrating because, you know, this is one of my all-time favorite wrestlers, and the man is an absolute coward. Every time he gets in the ring with someone, he immediately jumps over the ropes or, or jumps through the ropes and you know runs away. And it's like, dude, what are you doing? You are easily can match up with pretty much anyone out there. Uh, Elizabeth, she's always off to the side, you know, worried about her husband and whatnot. And he, like, he's always out there kind of like kind of pushing her around, kind of yelling at her and stuff. And it's like, I wonder if that's kind of like what the relationship was in real life or if it was all just simply an act. And I talked about before uh, the matchup where Macho Man lost to the Ultimate Warrior, and you know he had Elizabeth out in the uh, stands when Queen Sherry started beating up a Macho Man at the end of his match, and she jumps into the ring, whoops Sherry, throws her out the ring, and you know Macho Man starts swinging on her, uh, thinking that you know she's Sherry or thinking that she he she was the person that was attacking him, realized it was his wife, and. Um, that that moment I remember as a kid and I remember thinking it was so beautiful it was it was sad it was beautiful and it brought tears to your eyes and it just kind of like going back and watching these videos and seeing that the audience and seeing their reaction and when he hoists her up on his shoulder man mm, it, it that it's one of those things that never ages uh, it was be a beautiful moment 30 years ago and it's still a beautiful moment today <laughs> uh, the next matchup is going to feature Hercules so this is the one I was talking about uh, earlier in the video the first time I did this video I have three Hercules figures uh, I don't know if you can see it but up there uh, let me see if I can point to it right about there 
that Hercules I got from the uh, Raider Nation, and there's another Hercules I got from uh, Wrestling Writer. So first time I, I did this video, or these videos, as I mentioned, when I um, had my collection, I had the original sitting on the shelf, and then I had all the customs sitting next to them, and then I'd go to the next uh, wrestler, and if they had a custom, they would obviously be next to them. In this time around, I'm going to do things differently. Because those two modes of uh, Hercules are not the same you know, mold or same fighting pose as this one, I'm going to consider them to be different figures. So they will uh, do their own battle against the competitor on their own. They will not go up against this figure. So that basically gives three uh, Hercules chances to move forward. This is a, a gorgeous design of the, the figure. I absolutely love this. And the fighting pose, mid-tier to low mid-tier uh, figure. I mean, it's playable, but it's not the best. You can use it, but it's something that you would just use in like a battle to get beat up and then pinned, you know, or thrown over the ropes or something. Not exactly the best design for for for, for a play if you're a kid. And uh, and I said for kids, but come on, let's be honest. How many adults out there are are, <laughs> are uh, bashing these things around and having some fun? Hey, I would. Why not? You know, gotta keep things entertaining sometimes. So we got Hercules, and in this competition, he's going against one of the absolute elite figures of the LJN line. This is a phenomenal figure, and this is one that I've harped on like crazy the last time I did this. And it's because there's there's no there are no negatives about this figure. If you had one negative, is that they don't give him any underwear or anything like that. So he has like this little, I don't know, skirt, whatever it is, uh, that he wears. That's it. But, I mean, it's got a good weight to it, of course. And, you know, like the Bundys and the Big John Stud figures, etc. I love the figures that have weight to them. And he's got his legs spread far enough apart where if you wanted to, you could, you know, give him a beautiful body slam. He's got... A good Hogan-esque, you know, fighting pose where he can give a perfect body slam. He can give like the Undertaker under the throat chop. You know, he can throw a punch, close line. There are just no flaws in this figure. It is an absolute beauty design-wise and play-wise. It's about as perfect as you can hope for in an action figure. And when you look at the overall details, just overall the, the entire figure, again, no flaws and it is so rare to find that in a, in a figure. You know, as beautiful as this is, design-wise, he could never come close to comparing to a Kamala. And... I don't know. It just it, There's just no comparison. I mean, this is just one of those figures where the second you hold it up, it's game over. So, Kamala... I'm trying to think... I, I don't know if it was like Superstars of Wrestling, but one of those old Saturday morning type shows. I remember watching him and uh, Papa Shango always do battle. And Kamala was kind of a weird ca character when he came back to WWF. Uh, I know he was, you know, obviously in the 80s and left, came back when I started watching in the early 90s. Um, that, that was like really my first introduction to him. You know, he, he would always do like... Like he would knock someone down and they'd be on their their face and he'd come in and he'd do a belly flop on them and he would try to pin them like this and then he would start rolling them over and then he would pin them again on, on <laughs> with their back up and I don't know if that was part of the the character or if they were just trying to make him an idiot or something I I don't know but it's such a fun character either way and. It's a shame. They they actually did a really fantastic Kamala uh, for Hasbro. But the sad thing is, beautiful do design ruined because they put him with the, the fused legs and the little butt on the back that, you know, push down, the head pops up. Not the right, you know, uh, right uh, figure or right mold or model for that one. But you can't have any complaints about this one. Hands down, one million percent. Kamala defeats Hercules and moves on to round two. 
So I've got two figures, uh, original custom. Both of these figures were on my top 10 list, but they were on different top 10 lists. The first figure is Ken Patera. Now, Ken Patera, the, the size and dimensions of this figure makes it an absolute beauty with the design of the singlet and everything and you know the muscles the face this is a fantastic looking figure this could have been if they gave this figure a, a kamala type pose fighting pose this would have been another absolute elite figure but because his arms are up it basically like a macho man type only you know further up there because macho man's more out like this it makes it one of the worst figures of the LJN line and an absolute gorgeous piece on my top 10 list of worst LJNs of all time and I think I put him at like number 10 if I'm not mistaken now he barely made the top 10 but uh, I think I had like Harley Race on there or something but I ended up putting him ahead of him because I liked Harley Race's outfit better Ken Patera I can't really remember Ken Patera I did watch a video this morning uh, SummerSlam 89, I believe. No, SummerSlam 87. Was it some? No, so, sorry. Survivor Series 87. And uh, it was a 10-man tag team, which featured, uh, who was it? Don Morocco, The Rock. So The Rock, Don Morocco, Ken Patera, who <laughs> looked nothing like this. Hulk Hogan, Bam Bam Bigelow, and uh, who else was on that team? Oh, uh, Paul Orndorff. And it's kind of odd because, you know, Paul Orndorff to me has always been a bad guy. So seeing him uh, fight for the good side is kind of weird. But And it also was a depressing match. Uh, you see Andre the Giant on the opposite side as the team captain. And the first time you see that man step in the ring, he's supposed to be going up against Hogan. But Hogan is basically tagged out. So... You know, Andre steps out, and Andre the Giant is basically out of the match the entire time. That's like a 37 minute match, 35 minute match, something like that. And the only time you see Andre the Giant in there is right at the end as he's pinning Bam Bam Bigelow. And that's just absolutely horrible to think that this man used to be a legend, but he became nothing more than a punch and slap type of guy. And, and the way he got kind of through Bam Bam Bigelow, a man that's like 300 plus pounds. It, it, I mean, you would think the giant would be able to lift that up, lift him up like with ease, but he kind of struggled to do so. I mean, I get it. The man had back problems and you know a bunch, bunch of other health issues, but uh, just not the you know the Andre the Giant you would think and love. Very sad. But like I was saying, uh, Ken Patera, he looked minuscule in comparison to all the other competitors, and to see him as this buff character right here, nah, I, I just don't see it. Great figure, but an absolute bad pose, which kills it. Now, it does go against the Wrestling Rider cus, uh, Custom. Now, I mentioned that this figure was also on a top 10 list of mine. This one, I had on my top 10 list of my most favorite Wrestling Rider uh, figures, or most favorite Wrestling Rider acquisitions. And there are so many great things to uh, look about this about this figure. Everything from the addition of a belt here, uh, the USA, beautiful. Love the blonde hair. The, the black singlet with the boots. I mean, this purple, I, I like it and everything. It looks nice, but come on. This is an absolute fantastic piece. And there are a thousand figures I could have chosen from Wrestling Rider to put on my list of you know most favorite but I, I think this was an absolutely phenomenal choice because, look, it's just a beautiful figure. In that particular instance, I wasn't really going off of fighting poses or anything. I was going off of design and, and, and color and pretty much, well, yeah, I was taking consideration poses too, but absolute beauty. I like the figure a lot, but the original will not top the custom in this matchup. The wrestling writer custom Ken Patera does move forward to the next round. The next matchup is going to feature a King Harley race. 
Now, the only, well, there are two positives I really like about this figure. For starters, I, I, I love the accessory. Always a highlight for any figure. And the jacket or robe that he wears, that is a beauty. I mean, as I said before, I do not mind figures that are clothed. I mean, if he was just a regular, you know, bare chested figure with, with trunks, I mean, really, would he make that much? Would it be that much more appealing in my eyes? And I don't think so. So aesthetically, that is a fantastic piece. And Harley Race, even in the figure, when you see him uh, on live at TV and you look at him in here, the man looks like he's in his 50s or something. I don't know if, how old he was, you know, when this figure, at the time that this figure was made, but... Not exactly someone I grew up watching, so the first time I think I ever became familiar with Harley Race was probably during my uh, LJN collecting. Yeah, I've seen some matches here and there. You know, they're normally like, you know, three on three tag team matches or something like that. So in this competition, he goes up against not quite an elite figure. But definitely a top tier figure, possibly somewhere on the top 15 of my all-time favorite LJN figures. This is a phenomenal piece, and he has one of the best accessories with this beautiful hat. And his fighting pose is more than adequate. Good punch, clothesline pose, and you know if you wanted to come under, you you could do an, an adequate body slam, not the best, but it still would be an incredible figure to wrestle with. I would have loved to have had this as a kid. Of course, by the time I got old enough to actually play, you know, you know, LJN was long gone. You know, Hasbro's were the figures to uh, to collect. And but this right here is, is phenomenal. I absolutely love this piece. And the figure itself, it's kind of like a, a Billy Jack Haynes. Two of the fig, two characters that a lot of people really don't care about are like some of the more expensive figures. Generally, they were selling for $75 to $90 a piece. And nowadays, I think that price has gone down. I think it's because everybody that's been collecting them has them now. So now I think people just buy them to resell them or something. So this figure that I used to bid on like crazy, which, you know, just as is, $75 to $90. And I put up a listing for the same figure with accessory for a much lower price and it doesn't sell at all so that's why I'm thinking it's uh, everyone that wants it it's pretty much has it so I don't know um, type of Crocodile Dundee type of figure no what was that Paul Hogan was that the name of the uh, the actor it's been a long time since I thought about Crocodile Dundee I mean it's probably been decades since I've seen those movies but don't know much about the, the the character, but all I know is he has one of the best LJN figures, and it's just a too easy of a battle here. You have one of the worst fighting poses of any of the LJN figures, and again, this is probably a, a top 15 worst figure, but I think the, the jacket or the design of the figure minus the fighting pose makes this you know, obviously brings it up higher, but fighting wise, yeah, definitely one of the worst. Outback Jack, one of the best. He does defeat King Harley Race. He does move on to round two. So, not really seeing how it's going to line up, but just for sake of argument, if you got Ken Patera Custom versus the, I don't know, facing Outback Jack, that's going to be a tough, uh, tough choice. I mean, once you start getting to round two, then things really start getting really difficult. I think for the most part, I have a pretty good idea, you know, uh, when I look at these figures of who I would like to choose over the other. But once you get to round two, you're really going to have to put more deep thought process into a lot of these figures. Because you have an amazing custom there, and it's going against an amazing LJN original. So it doesn't mean that these two are going to square off, but if they do, uh, that's definitely going to be a, an interesting matchup. So, here is another fantastic figure that is clothed that a lot of people do not like because of said clothing. And it's Coco Beware. Coco Beware, I mean, he had to have been around, 
I don't know if it was if he was with the WWF nonstop between the '80s into the early to mid '90s because he was around for the LGNs and of course he was still around for Hasbro. So I'm assuming so. Or you know, but a lot of folks they leave, they come back. So he is. I guess he was like a fun, you know, wrestler for me. Not anything that you like, you know, was super excited to see in any type of major uh, competition. What was it? The nineteen ninety Royal Rumble, and I think that's the Royal Rumble, the Rumble that really made me realize, truly realize, and appreciate Ted DiBiase as a wrestler. Because when you look at guys like Ted DiBiase, like Rick Martel, like Bob Backlund, you know these guys that come into the Royal Rumble and then stay in there for like. 50 minutes to an hour. So, Coco Beware coming at number two, squaring off against DiBiase. DiBiase eliminates him almost immediately. You know, he, he's, a, he's a fun uh, fun wrestler. He does a little bird dance. And, yeah, you're going to cheer for it. it, it it's, uh, you know, it's good uh, TV watching, but not really a threat as far as uh, wrestling is concerned. And, with the accessory, that makes this an absolutely phenomenal overall figure. Fighting pose, it's not bad. The only thing that makes this a terrible fighting pose uh, figure is the way that his hands are positioned. Which, because of the little crevice in the Frankie bird, uh, the bird Frankie, you obviously have to have enough space for it to fit on his hands so he can actually hold the bird. But... I mean, it's a beautiful figure and it has a decent pose. It's still a very playable figure if you wanted to use it as a kid or if you had it as a kid and you were using it. But I do have a custom figure. Now, this is the second custom I have ever purchased from the Raider Nation. So I talked about Justin, uh, his shop at the Raider Nation. Uh, he doesn't get these LJN customs in very often. But when he does, I scoop them immediately because the artist, Kenny Lester, is absolutely amazing. Uh, one of the most elite customizers in the game. And their figures are always sparkly, got a nice little shine to them, and they're just so unique, and I absolutely love it. Uh, this is the custom from the Raider Nation. And as you look at the two figures, you know, they you can see a little difference where they kind of mix it up a little bit. You know, switching the white for the jacket for the pants, red pants for the red jacket, etc. And, you know, even his design for the Toucan Bird is so much better on the Raider Nation version. And then they got Coco Beware on here, which is so awesome. And I mean, just look at the the way this this figure sparkles. It just the way it shines is such a beauty. It's just a phenomenal. I love the piece. And this one doesn't have it, but he's got this awesome design in his hair. <sighs> I I might have to get another Frankie Bird uh, just for this figure. I mean, I I wanted to get accessories for the for the originals, but I mean, I like to have customs have them as well. I mean, it's pretty obvious. We know that the custom is going to defeat the original. Uh, it, it, I love this figure, but this is just too gorgeous of a piece. And I really hope to see this one around for three or four rounds because this is a fantastic one. I don't remember where this figure was the last time I did this video. But uh, I definitely look forward to, to seeing how far uh, he goes in this battle. The next... Competition is going to feature Ted Arcidi and Bam Bam Bigelow. Now, first thing we notice right off the bat is the fighting pose. They pretty much have identical poses. And Ted Arcidi is not a bad looking figure. I know Vince McMahon was obsessed with, you know, bodybuilders and whatnot. And bodybuilders are supposed to be like... Even when you look at like Triple H later on, you know, John Cena type, The Rock, you guys like that. Guys that are stacked and then just would appear to be like these fantastic wrestlers, but they come in and they don't have the mobility or the acrobatics to, to be true wrestlers. 
I've never seen Ted RC fight. Uh, I, I don't know anything about him. Only what I've heard other people talk about uh, when they describe, you know, his fighting attributes, what have you. So, it's a decent looking figure. I mean, like a King Kong Bundy, just one singlet, one special color. I don't know how how I feel about these, you know, ankle socks and whatnot, or uh, actually the one that go up the calf. That kind of looks weird, but adequate figure. But the fighting pose, it's just not there. Same thing with Bam Bam Bigelow. He, I love Bam Bam Bigelow. Uh, I grew up watching him as a kid. I love the design of the fire on his on his uh, his uniform. I mean, it's just so amazing, man. Watching him in the Survivor Series this morning, he gave it his all. Uh, he was the last man standing. Went out, you know. He pinned uh, one man gang. Uh, before that, uh, he pinned uh, man. Who else was in there? Was it Rick Rude or was Rick Rude already eliminated? No, I think Rick Rude was already eliminated. So, oh, it was Bundy. He pinned Bundy. Then he pinned uh, <laughs> One Man Gang. And holy crap, One Man Gang. That guy has got to be like 800 pounds. That man is absolutely huge. And I don't mean huge as in stomach. I mean tall as well. That man was about the size of uh, Andre the Giant. So, wow. And then you see One Man Gang later on as a keem. And he actually does look, you know, pretty hefty. But uh, the fact that Bam Bam got tore up by One Man Gang. Was still able to finish him off, and then uh, obviously you're going against three Titans in Bundy, and then One Man Gang, and then Andre the Giant. You know him basically doing it by himself at the end there. No chance, but he gave it his all, and it is one of my favorite uh, favorite battles watching Bam Bam fight in. Because they both have the same fighting pose, and I love Bam Bam Bigelow's design overall, I, I think this is a pretty easy choice to select Bam Bam Bigelow to move not, to move on to the next round. So I did have one more battle, which I'm going to wait for the next video, because we have already surpassed 37 minutes, and uh, I am going to make that video tonight. I might make another, two more videos, but at least one more. Uh, so today it is, what, what's today? It is, okay, so it's past midnight, so it officially turned Friday, September 23rd. So, I don't know, I guess I started this Thursday, Thursday night going into Friday, wow. So Friday the 23rd of uh, September, and this video probably won't be posted until October sometime, so it, it, it's going to be a minute. And like I said, when it comes to these videos... I'm probably going to sit there and make a ton of videos every single day. And then, you know, they, they'll just be posted periodically over the next uh, couple months, uh, every three days or so. I am going to end the video here, guys. Uh, thank you for your support and watching and your recommendation. I was really uh, questioning whether or not I wanted to do this competition again. And, you know, your, your encouragement uh, definitely push me to do this and I'm glad you did because I'm really getting a, a kick out of doing this. I really love it. Uh, thank you so much everyone. I will talk to you in the comments and uh, see you in the next video. Goodbye for now.